Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to discuss what COVID test is right for me. The reason why I thought I would speak about this today is that I had a friend that went to her doctor's office and asked for a COVID-19 test. They ended up doing the nasal pharyngeal PCR swab and told her that she was negative. But what she really wanted to know was whether she had had COVID-19 in the past. She was really ill in early March and just wanted to see if she had been exposed or had had COVID-19 at that time. Well, the right test wasn't performed. So I thought I'd talk to you guys about the different kinds of tests and tell you about a new test that was just announced today. There are basically three types of tests for the novel coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. The first one we're probably all the most familiar with. It's the nasal pharyngeal swab that uses PCR testing. It has great specificity, meaning that if the result is positive, you very likely have SARS-CoV-2. However, if it's negative, there have been some concerns about false negatives, meaning that the sensitivity may only be 60 to 70%. We think some of the reasons why this may be true are that the person didn't get a good sample. It's kind of a difficult test to obtain because the nasal swab is put all the way back into the nasal canal um, and it's quite uncomfortable. And the swab needs to stay in the nasal cavity for about 15 seconds. Also, this type of test is best used just after symptom onset. If you do it too far after you have symptoms, it may no longer be positive, even though you've had exposure or symptoms of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Therefore, it may turn negative about three weeks after your symptoms start from COVID-19. The next category of testing we're hearing more about, and it's called antibody testing. This is done from blood collection and detects whether antibodies are found in your blood. Antibodies are produced after you've had exposure or symptoms of COVID-19. There are two types of antibody tests. One is a rapid finger stick where the results come back in a few minutes. And the other is a blood test where they usually take blood out of your arm and the results usually come back in a few hours. This type of test is probably best to be done at least eight to 14 days after your symptoms. If you do it too early or early in the course of your illness, it may not give good results because the antibodies don't start generating until about a week or more after your symptoms start. Therefore, this test is not to be used to detect an acute infection. An acute infection is best diagnosed through the PCR or nasal pharyngeal test that I just spoke about. Furthermore, there are a lot of fakes out there, meaning that there are a lot of tests that are not gonna give good results. The FDA granted a lot of emergency use authorizations to over 200 tests, but now they're pulling back and requiring companies to prove their results. In the meantime, many, many, many tests have not been shown to be very effective. Therefore, they may have very poor accuracy. At this point, I really don't see the value of getting an antibody test because there are so many fakes out there. And also, once we know that you have antibodies, that doesn't mean that you should stop doing all of the things that we're still recommending because we just don't know how long immunity with antibodies will last. Therefore, just because you have antibodies doesn't mean that you're protected. We hope that that's true, and we've seen that with other viruses similar to SARS-CoV-2, but we just don't know yet. So if you go get an antibody test and you are found to have antibodies, you still need to maintain social distance and protect yourself and protect those around you. The third category of testing is an antigen test. This was just announced today that the FDA has granted an emergency use authorization for Quidel Corp's ant antigen testing. Like the PCR testing, it's a nasal swab and it must be done in a doctor's office. This is another type of test to help us determine if you have an acute or current infection. The great thing about antigen testing is that it comes back in minutes. It's similar to a strep test or a flu test that we're also familiar with. It has wonderful specificity, meaning that if the test is positive, 
you likely have COVID-19 or SARS-CoV. However, if it's a negative, there are quite a few false negatives that can happen with this test. So it may be that at your doctor's office, you get a quick antigen test, and if it's negative, then they still go on to do the nasal pharyngeal PCR swab. We'll just have to see what happens. Lastly, I wanna talk about home tests. There are two different types of home tests that have been granted emergency use authorization by the FDA. The first one is an at-home nasal swab developed by LabCorp. They send you all the supplies via FedEx, you swab your own nose based on directions that they give you online, and you send it back to them via FedEx. You then access your results online. However, there are some states that do not allow this type of home testing, and those states include Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and Rhode Island. At this point, they're giving priority to healthcare workers, so I'm not sure how available this testing is quite yet. And lastly, there's an at-home saliva test that's been recently developed by Rutgers University. It also was just granted emergency use authorization by the FDA. With this test, you collect saliva at home in a tube and FedEx it back to them. This also needs to be done by prescription only, and I'm not quite sure how available this type of testing is at this point. I wanna mention these at-home tests because these are the only ones that have been given emergency use authorization by the FDA. All other at-home tests that you hear about are fake, or at least have not been approved by the FDA, and therefore I would question their validity. Thanks again for joining me.